So what's your name? I'm Chris, and I'm the chair of Quest FTM UK. And what's that all about? Uh, it's an organisation that is primarily for people who are female to male, transgender, that is, at birth. I remember they talking to you last year, female. Right? outside in the sun. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, so what's your name? I'm Chris, and I'm the chair of Quest FTM UK. And well, what's that all about? Uh, it's an organisation that is primarily for people who are female to male, transgender, that is, at birth. I remember talking to you last year, female. Right? outside in the sun. Yeah. Yes. And uh, they move uh, on a progression towards something which may be male or it may be something in between yes. or it may be agent, whatever. But we're there to give some support to help change policy around the country, health policy, um, any other thing that's uh, a barrier to a successful transition or, and a successful integration within the general public. Yeah, has, has, uh, have things changed much since last year? Yeah, I guess quite a number of things have happened, and the, the main thing is on the health side, where the um, commissioning now has changed. So people who want to transition medically and surgically are trying to do that on the NHS. Right. The NHS has been helpful, uh, but in certain areas they are they've been less than helpful, um, and they put some unnecessary obstacles in people's way. Yes. What's happened now? is that the commissioning of the services for people who are trans has been taken away from the local areas and it's, they've been given to a national commissioning group. Right. That's not been sorted entirely yet, but the hope is that the postcode lottery that people had said existed, yeah. where there are different people getting different kind of replies to what is it that I can transition, you know, how much can I have to transition or what surgery can I have, all of that then becomes on a national level something that is sorted out for the person and what we've I think achieved is that they now understand that it's the person who attracts the money yes. for their transition uh -huh. and not the individual operation, you know, they don't have to go through hoops to prove all this. Once their gender clinic says this is what is needed for them, then that's what will be supplied. Uh -huh. So yeah, quite a big change. Not everything is sorted, but nearly so. Yeah. Have you got more people getting in touch with you? Um, it's about the same, I would, I would think. I think yeah. it's a steady rate of referral. Uh -huh. uh, overall, the, the people transitioning is going up. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting new people all the time, but we're also... Um, there's quite a lot of people who require some kind of help for quite a long time, so it depends on where they get in contact. So it might be for us, it might be uh, for other organisations. Uh, well, thanks very much for that. I don't know whether Chris is going to talk to you. Yeah, really yeah. cool to her. What's your name? My name's Helen and I'm the Time Bank coordinator. Well, what's Time Bank? It's all about volunteering but with a bit of a twist because for every hour that you volunteer, you get an hour's time credit back. Right. So if it's You're for talking a to the camera yeah. rather than to the XRF ground. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, for example, if you were to go out and sit and have a cup of coffee with somebody so that they weren't feeling lonely yes. or something like that, you'd get, for every hour that you spend doing that, you'd get an hour's time credit back so if you needed help with um, gardening or decorating or computing or anything else you would get hold of me and say Helen I need some help with this I'd find a time back member that can help you I'd put you together and then you'd, you'd do the time exchanges but it's very flexible in that it only you you only volunteer for the time that you can so if I say can you help with um, something and you say no it's fine it's yes. not a problem there's no guilt complex involved there or anything like that so it's a very good so where are you based? We're actually in the HQ building, but our project is actually city-wide. Yeah. So somewhere the HQ on Union Street. What is the HQ? Used to be the old Jaeger factory. The old Jaeger factory. <laughs> down in between Liddles and Aldi. So we, our office is in there. Is that the great big flat building? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, we're in there. Um, but the time banking activity can take place anywhere across the city. So someone in Plimpton could be helping someone in Devonport, for example. And how long have you been up and running? Sorry? How long have you been up and running? 
We've, uh, the time bank has been funded by the lottery since November last year, but we've been running for about a year, 18 months before that, as funded through Colebrook Housing. Have you got many people involved? We've got 78 time bank members at the minute, and in the last year they've exchanged over 650 hours. I've heard something uh, similar to that in conjunction with the Methodist Church in town. Is, is this Sorry, I can't hear I've heard something similar to that in conjunction with the Methodist Church in town. There is, yeah, there is a Stonehouse time bank, which which is actually based in Stonehouse. It's one of four current time banks that are run by Plymouth City. But they're what they call locality time banks. So any activity are in the Stonehouse one will be based in Stonehouse. Right. Um, St Buda will be based in St Buda, Bombarton in that area. Yes. And Whitley will be based in that area. But the Opportunity Knox time bank is actually citywide. So the activities can be like they are today in, in the park here in Devonport or anywhere within the city. We hold coffee mornings in Green Bank. I'm looking to do coffee mornings with the, the cafe here, so it's it's very very flexible. Right. So, uh, and are you enjoying the festival? It is. It's brilliant. Uh, I'm loving it. It's really say, good. I, I look very good in your sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, thanks, a lot, so. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Jo What's your name, sorry? Ali Jones. Ali, Ali Jones. Are you Ali a singer? Jones. Yeah. No, Ali uh, Jones. Ali. <laughs> you, not Ali Jones, the, uh, the BBC Jones. Uh, presenter yeah. and singer. Nah. Uh, not related to it. Or soprano. Nah. So, uh, what Can't are you doing here at the uh, Pipe uh, Festival? We do a job club. So, anyone who's looking for work, yes. it's just a job club. We do, we, uh, like, if you've got hands, but we don't have any email with Ricky Mint, so. No. Oh, no, it's alright, I'm just being facetious. That's alright. Now we're separate from them. Right, okay. We have our own sponsors. We do work with Working Links, yes. but we're separate. We uh, sit down, we will help other people. So you want to see me doing? We help you with that. Yeah, sorry, it's getting a tremendous amount of flare coming in from the uh, sun behind you. Okay, uh, so we help with CVs, yeah. covering letters over your knee, and if you've got no email address, we'll sit down with somebody who's used a computer yes. and work with them on the computer to actually do everything they need to do online. Yeah. And that's also the Universal Job Match site as well. We sit there and do one to one with them yes. so they can do what they need to do, and if it gets stuck, we give them a hand. And so basically, you're there to put yourself, and if we can't do it ourselves, we all get we, because no, the, 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 the problem I have with some of these job centres is the attitude they have to the, uh, the people, to the clients. I had to uh, uh, tell somebody that they had a bit of an attitude problem to the, to the way they were talking to the... It wasn't your organisation, but it was somewhere else. And, uh, we're, and, not, and, uh, we're not... We're not linked to the job centre. We're completely separate and you don't try and dictate to, uh, no. to clients. You try and have Our sponsors are advice. the lottery, you see. Yes. And... Hello, what's your name? I'm Claire with Healthport Plymouth. Claire, are you part of the same? She's different. We're separate right, 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 organisations. Right, right, right. 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 See, that's who Sorry. we're sponsored by. Right, okay, cool. And we don't we don't work with the job centre. Yeah, cool. Job centre may sense us, but we come in. If you came in, you know what you're doing with the computer. We will sit down with you and do one to one, do it at your pace. Yeah. So we explain to them, we work with you at your own pace, so we don't shove you so into it. So you're at the level of the, uh, the clients rather than trying to dictate to the client, yes. working with the clients? Yes, we work with the clients always. Okay. And we do what we can for you, but if it's something we can't officially do for you, what we do is, like got working links or another job place or certain age, we touch from 18 upwards. Yes. You could be in your 80s looking for a job and we take you in. Uh -huh. And we will help you because no one can use computers. Yes. So we will sit with them there and work with them on the computer. Uh -huh. How do you feel like the universal job match site and everything yes. else? Yeah. So whether we work with the person. Good one. One to one. It's if it takes a bit longer to do it, it yeah. takes longer. Uh -huh. But we try to cater for each person differently. So how long has this uh, this uh, uh, this has been up and running? Uh, Say how long it's been running, so let's speak to Helen there about how long the job has been running because she's in charge of it. Yeah, quite a while then. Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot anyway. That's right, yeah. Are you enjoying the festival? Okay, actually, yes. Okay, nice day for it. Yep. Cheers. So, uh, what do you say you do again? Um, uh, okay, yeah, I'm Claire, I'm with Healthwatch, um, Healthwatch Plymouth. We're a yeah. not for profit. Um, <laughs> He's looking at your badge. I know. We're an independent. What's your badge after? Yes. <laughs> 
We're an independent not-for-profit organisation yes. and what we're trying to do is um, get out there and reach the, all the wide communities of Plymouth to gather their feedback and experiences of health and social care services in the Plymouth area. Yeah, um, yeah so basically, I mean, we all have contact with health and social care, whether it's adult social care, your doctors, your dentists, your DGP, your optician, pharmacies are part of the, um, NHS funding um, and, and obviously the local hospitals, Derriford, the Cumberland Centre, Mount Gauls. Um, and we just want to hear what's good, what's bad. If yes. it's good, we can pass that information back. If it's not great, we actually have a team of volunteers that sit on management boards for these organisations yes. and they can feed that information back to these service providers yes. and, and we can work with organisations to make changes for the better in Plymouth. Yeah. So it's giving that power back to the voice of Plymouth, giving, it, giving that power back to Plymouth service users. At the end yeah. of the day, they're the ones that, that need it. Well, you, uh, people organize, organize, organizations like yours are desperately need in the city, yeah. but it's still got a long way to go in some areas. And not, not trying to be negative, it's from what I know, because I'm having about kind of mixed with an awful lot of people. Uh, but uh, I, I won't talk about that on camera. So you're from St Luke's Hospice? I'm, I'm uh, a volunteer ambassador yeah. for St Luke's That's Hospice, sure. Uh, wrong there. My name's Sharon, Yes. Hello, Sharon. and I'm part of the uh, fundraising team yeah. that goes out in the community and to help raise the £6 million that it takes to run St Luke's Hospice every year. Oh. It's a lot of money. So but yeah. events like this, and for Pride as well, who also support us as well. And you've got shops in Plymouth as well? We have 36 shops in the St Luke's Catbridge area, yes. which stretch all the way up to Seaton, yes. around to Oakhampton, back up to Launceston, then over to South East Cornwall from Liscard, and then back again. It's a huge area, oh. and we see over 3,500 people a year. So how long is the uh, St Luke's? I don't know if you know, but how long has the St Luke's... Uh, St Luke's has been months? going for 31 years. Nice one. Um, so, how do you, so you meet your targets every year, do you? So far, so far, we only get a certain amount of money from the government. Yes. Roughly about 1.2, 1.3 million. Is that like going up or down, or is it staying static? It's, it does vary depending on what's available, but some of our money comes from corporate sponsorship, yes. where local businesses help. Some of our money comes from events, and if I'd like to show you, I've got, I've, I've put them in here because of the wind blowing everything around. Okay. Some of them. Let's grab these out because it's been so windy. I've put these safe so I don't lose them. Some of the events that are coming up yeah. are swimathons. Right. We've also got. Whoops! There we go. That's the reason. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The wind has not helped. We've also got our dragon I'll boat. I'll tell you what it is. The dragon boat anyway. What, yeah. what dates are these? All the dates are on the forms. Right. Okay. <laughs> And all the details are there, but it's also on the St Luke's website. I can't see a thing. Okay. All right, and then we've got our Walk on the Wild side, which is coming up very soon. So there's some of the events that, yes. that we bring use for money. And then there's also the community ones, yeah. where you'd have like a coffee morning or a little get together, sometimes a stall at various events. Uh -huh. It can be anything from a head shave to sitting in a big tub of beans. But every single penny yes. goes to the hospice. And you meet your every year, that's what you Cross your fingers. So far. So are you enjoying so the fossil today? I love doing things like Couldn't this. It's a one in seven, year, it's seven years. It's really good. So it's uh, ideal to have it like It this. is, it's really good. The venue is fantastic. Yeah. To use a local facility like this Absolutely. and to its best of advantage as well. We couldn't have wished for better weather. Yeah. And because it's so inclusive, so looks don't give a monkeys yeah. who or what you are. If you're ill, we look after you. So uh, who do you cater for at the hospital? Is it a uh, cross section of all, Any, all the community? Anybody in the community. If you fit the if you're in, living within the St Luke's catchment area, yes. then we're there to look after you if you have a life-limiting illness or disease. Uh -huh. What the thing is, is it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to die, yeah. but you have something there that needs help, you medically, know, socially, um, spiritually. You know, we're, we're in a world that makes it, we're in a country that's making a big issue out of, out of everything. Instead of people getting on with their lives and being able to get on with yeah. their lives, everything in this country is being made a big, big issue. 
you know, and in Europe and outside this country, everything's different. People don't realise that we're massively over-controlled in this country, and it, uh, you know, it's, it, it's the pressure pot about to explode if it's not counting. Uh, they need to take the pressure off, but I don't think it's going to change because it's a lot of it's coming from an enclosed press and, and news broadcasting and legal system as well. well. For us, we just do our best to let everybody know the services that are available yes. um, for the patient themselves, but also for the family yeah. as well, and for however long it takes. There's lots of people that I've seen today that have been through cancer and different illnesses yeah. and they've come through the other side yeah. and they've been through St Luke's because they are the experts in palliative care yeah. and that's what they needed at the time. They... But it wasn't just them, it was their family as well yeah. because everybody goes through it, it's all affected. Yes. So we have our counsellors there, and which is one of the things that I'm training to be. Yes. And also when the time comes, we will be there to help you die in peace and in dignity yeah. with as much support as possible and to continue yeah, on for the families afterwards. To but it doesn't come cheap. No. It works out to £9 a minute. No, it is. Ridiculous amount of money. But we've got to raise that money. And with the continued help and support of the local community, yeah. and they have always been fantastic, I mean, I, I, we will continue I, to provide the care that's needed. I was in the Air Force for 12 years, and I was working at in Brussels for three years. Yeah. And it's instilled in you, into you then that there's a financial value in life, an expendability factor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it shouldn't be acceptable, to be honest. If we could do it, you know, for free, we wouldn't, but yeah. unfortunately we can't. And the money's got to come for somewhere. Yeah. But people know that when they donate to us, that's where the money's going to go. Yeah. It's going to go into that care and support, and it'll continue on that cycle for as long as it takes. Well, thanks so much, anyway. For the welcome. Enjoy Thank you. And to you. <laughs> back uh, to the 60s now.
this i've said it 10 times if you don't scream loud enough we're going out because they're doing it for free they're trying to entertain you pretty hard to be honest but they're trying to do it just before i move on because i'm a little bit biased just down in that corner the little cream tent down there that is the beach hut just down in the corner anyone that books in today beach hut is a tanning hair and beauty salon Anyone that books in gets 50% off any treatment today. Just down there in the corner, the little cream tent. Best beauticians and hairdressers and sunbeds in town. Clearly. What? I didn't say nail technicians, but we do have the best nail technician. Lee McKinnon is the best. Sorry about that, Donna. I know, and I eat it. Are we ready? Here we go then guys, we're going to give you over to our next singer, which is Mike Tyler. So please put your hands together for Mike Tyler! How are we doing there guys? Are we alright? Are we enjoying pride? Come on in, I want to see you uptown soon, it's time to party!